the reality in government and in policy making, whether in the economy, security, military, when you come into government, you inherit the assets and liabilities. And you cannot pretend to pick and choose what you will want to address. It is given to you, it's handed over to you, so it's a given. When this government came into power, it was obvious that the, the economy was in bad shape. Part of it had to do with uh, forces beyond us, beyond our borders, that had to do with the, the running of the international economy, the capitalist system itself, and uh, there was nothing anybody could do. But having admitted that, we also have to admit that the policy uh, terrain, the economic management concepts and policies and the, driving, uh, the drivers were not properly handled. So whoever was coming into government in 2015, even if the government of 2015 had continued, it would have had to, pay, to face the problems this government had had to face. But having said so, however, I believe certain choices were made, they were deliberate choices. Those choices not only aggravated the recession, even if it was inevitable, it aggravated the recession and in fact turned the management of the national economy into a joke. Every Tom, Dick and Harry can be posted anywhere. I believe in management in general and economic management in particular, you have to pick the right people in the right places. And when you mix yourself up by saying that anybody who shares the same genes with you, who is your relation, can be posted to, into any ministry or any crony of yours, or every, every Tom, Dick and Harry can be given every single appointment simply because he is a personal friend, he is a crony, then we are in very serious trouble. Is that what's happening? It was what happened. Mm. I'm, I'm a little worried. I mean, when you talk about are we better, and you say we're not better off. Mm. Yes, there's, there might be some areas that people might argue that we haven't made much improvement, or maybe we've even made, you know, we've gone on reverse. But would you look at all the sectors and say we haven't made progress anywhere in three years? If I had the discussion taking place now co correctly, I thought uh, economics was introduced. And, uh, you know, one of... He also talked about security, no, hold briefly. On. Let, 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 let's talk about economy, because... The two or the three are intertwined. You cannot talk about national economic uh, policy without looking at what impacts it had on the nation, on unemployment generation, on the number of people in job or out of job or in transition from one job to another job. It is very important for us to realize that. Secondly, nobody that I know of, of any consequence, can attempt to delineate economics from politics. It started from Lenin saying that it is simply <laughs> incredible. Yeah, but even focusing on the economy, some people will argue that, you know, farmers found it better. So, I mean, I remember speaking with uh, the Minister for Agriculture, Aldo Obi, and he said that, yes, everybody's talking about a recession, but farmers are not in recession. You, I don't you think, have that experience? I, I, I think my friend Aldo Obi was being economical with, with the truth. First and foremost, I come from one of the most important farming areas of Nigeria, Kano State. And I can tell you, the farming situation from 2015 to date, that is those who invest in farming in terms of money, in terms of input, in terms of quite a number of, of things which make farming profitable, I will not tell you that things are easy. They are not easy. Now, I, I, I was in, in an interview here in, in, in Abuja when I, you know, somebody asked me uh, what progress has been made and that how much uh, the government has done. I said, well, I measure progress by concrete terms. If I buy a fertilizer and I'm a farmer, and the prices of fertilizer have shot up from the time this government came, and it's still going up, and other inputs, whether you're talking about herbicides or you're talking of uh, other inputs, and labor itself on the farms is not necessarily either improving in terms of productivity of the labor, and you can also say that the people who are farm hands in our farms are not necessarily better off. You cannot tell me that we are doing better off. Propaganda is no choice, is no substitute for concrete, achievable policy objectives. And I haven't seen any evidence to tell me that we have done well in, 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 in farming policies. That is one. Secondly, ours is the capitalist society, whereby it's dog eat dog, right? 
as far as I'm concerned, if we want to encourage farming, we have to do it through a mix of policies, commercial farming, subsistence farming, and quite a lot of other things. And if we do so, we do so sincerely by telling the people what we are about to do. We are not saying the government has a bullet, uh, you know, a silver bullet, which it can shoot and everything will turn all right. And besides, a lot of bad policies have, have gone before, and they are not likely to go overnight because we are not here. Government is no miracle. It is doing the diligent thing that has to be done so that at least some people can be better off. I have not seen that evidence in particular in economic policy, and I'm not impressed by the kind of characters who are running our economic policy.